Travis Loop, going to talk about a critical issue for the water sector, and that is cybersecurity. Joined for this conversation by Andrew Hildick Smith. He is Operational Technology Security Lead at the Water ISAC. Uh, water ISAC, what, what is that? <laughs> water ISAC's a, a nonprofit, it's, it's the water sector's information sharing and analysis center. Okay, uh, cybersecurity. Uh, how important is cybersecurity for water utilities and how is that trending? Is it becoming more important? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so at cybersecurity, it's, it's really vital to maintaining resilience at a facility, at a utility, and it's, it's becoming you know, as important as all the other things we do to keep the system running. So if we don't engage in cybersecurity, we just, we, we increase the risk of having our systems disrupted, either the administrative side of the utility or the operational side. Mm. And as far as trending, in terms of like how well utilities are doing, mm. it's, you know, there's not like data on it. I, I think more utilities are putting more effort into it, but mm. maybe not as quickly as like the bad guys are, are upping their game. So mm. it's, you know, it's in a sense, it's sort of a race. Um, mm. Mm. What are what are those like primary threats and yeah. concerns for water utilities? Yeah. You know, you met, you said bad guys. Who are they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Maybe you can answer that yeah. a little bit. But yeah, yeah who? Um, what what are the concerns? Uh, cybersecurity concerns. Yeah. And then you know maybe where are these threats coming from? Yeah. So um, the majority of the bad guys and women are are after money, right? They, this is how they make their livelihood, and they can make a lot of money doing it, and. And, and what we see in the water sector and in other sectors too, um, the top of the list is probably ransomware. And um, I know of, a, of about 27 ransomware cases in the water sector, and about nine of those were in the SCADA system and the control system, so kind of like right in the heart of mm -hmm. a water or wastewater facility. And, um, and, and generally, from what I know of, the utilities aren't paying the ransom, but, but this summer one uh, wastewater utility paid a quarter million dollars, said here, I need whatever piece of the information that was encrypted to, run, to, to get back and running. So they paid a quarter million dollars. So it's, you know, it, it can be really serious, the impact. Mm -hmm. And then another category, and this is also in the money-making realm, mm -hmm. is something called business email compromise. So that's when an adversary is getting in touch with your financial officers and saying, we need to change where we route money electronically. You know, don't send it to this construction firm, send it to me at this account number. And that's really successful and easy to do, and, and they make lots of money. The FBI's, you know, in this country, there's, I've forgotten the number of billions of dollars lost through that, but the water sector has a portion of, of those losses. And then one last area, sort of on the um, control system mm -hmm. side. So this is this is less of money making. This is like if you were, say, a bigger utility and a nation state was focused on making a point with you. Um, something that came up this year was some software was discovered before it was deployed. It's called uh, uh, In Controller and Pipe Dream, and it, it essentially automated the process of breaking into a control system that would let somebody do real damage. Mm. So that's a concerning. So you've got that financial liability or financial concerns, right? Yeah. But then, like you just mentioned, there is uh, public health concerns here. Definitely. If someone's able to alter what's happening with chemicals or mm -hmm. any kind of thing in the treatment process, that's a real, that's a real concern yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So what should utilities be doing to try to address cybersecurity? Yeah. It could probably seem very overwhelming uh, like daunting or, oh my gosh, I don't have the time or resources for this. So what, what should they be doing? How should they at least get started? What's yeah. the minimum that should be happening? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of handy. This is the um, Department of Homeland Security and their uh, Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency um, have this declared as uh, October is Cybersecurity Month. All and, right, and we're doing this at the right time. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so they identify four steps that every organization should take. 
And um, so I'll just go through those because yeah. those are really, they're basic and really important and you can, you can make yourself a lot smaller target by doing these just six. Just these four, yeah. okay. So one is uh, implementing multi-factor authentication. So that's what you, you know, like when you create an account at the bank or mm -hmm. all, every place, you're busy, like you have your password and something else that you know. Mm. And that- or, or they have to text you a code exactly. and then you have to enter that. Yep. Yeah. Or there's an application on your phone or you have a little key that you plug into mm. your computer. And that, that's not infallible, but it makes a really big difference. Um, and then another thing is, creating strong passwords. It's mm. a, a, a bad guy just like, if you make his day if you have a lousy password because mm. it makes it so much easier to break in. So, and a, a strong password means essentially a long random password. Mm. And uh, if you use something like fall 2022 exclamation point or something with some common words and it's short, it's like eh, they can break it in, in seconds. And, and even if you have like, eight characters randomized, you know, yeah. complex, eight characters they can break in under a day. And so you, you want something long, and if you can, you know, randomize characters, that's great. And, and you, you know, you're not going to remember it all, but you can store it on a piece of paper, that's okay. Store mm -hmm. it on a password manager. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so any important account, whether it's your private or your work business, you know, mm -hmm. It should be long, and it doesn't have to be complex, but length, well, and, length. and randomness is most important. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then another one of these is uh, being able to recognize and report phishing. So, you know, we all get these emails, and some of them are, like, totally blatant. And, and <laughs> I have to laugh just because I get those all the time. Yeah. It's like, come on, that's the best you have to try to trick yeah. things? But, yeah. And, but, but, but then there's some that are going to be really sophisticated, and, and, and just you always want to remember... You know, don't give anybody a password. You know, if if a file comes to you and it's encrypted, I'd be pretty suspicious because the encryption is probably to bypass software that's looking for trouble. Mm. Um, and so, but then if you do click on something, you go, hey, wait, it, it wasn't what I was expecting. It was just like an empty folder. Well, report it. You mm. know, let your IT staff know because they can take action because um, a lot of times there's this big delay between uh, the first intrusion and when some bad things happen. Okay. So it can be days, it can be weeks. Mm -hmm. So let your IT staff know right away, I think I made a mistake, they're going to be happy, they're not going to get mad at you. Mm. Um, so those are three things. And then the fourth is patching. And so it's just updating your software. And it's so, you know, at home we're really used to doing it. It's easy, like you, it's time for the Windows monthly update. Yeah. You just click, yeah, go ahead or whatever. Patching can be pretty hard in a utility because there's so many systems and you want to patch the firmware to your, you know, like your control controllers and lots of things have software embedded. So there are going to be announcements that come out um, that say this is vulnerable, you're going to need to patch it. And so keeping up with those things where those systems are exposed to the world. So, you, you, you know, you can't patch everything. It's really, you can't keep up. But anything that's exposed to the internet or the outside world, you got to patch promptly. Gosh, these are, this sounds like great advice for the utilities, but also for individuals. Yeah, I'm like, absolutely. I need to make sure I'm doing all these things myself. Yeah. So, uh, if a utility wants to up its cybersecurity, yes. where should they go? What are the, what's the, what are the best resources and tools for them? Yeah. So there's a lot of information out there. So one, I'm going to pitch this because I work at the Water ISAC. I'll pitch the Water Absolutely. ISAC. It's uh, you pay a fee to join, but it's it's a reasonable fee, and and it helps condense all the information out there to what's relevant to a water or wastewater utility. And twice a week, you get an email that says, "Here are the threats. Here are some possible solutions." Um, it announces training opportunities. Once a month, we do a uh, cybersecurity w webinar to help bring people up to speed. Um, so that's one source. And then um, the EPA is another great source. They offer a free cyber assessment. So I, I can sign up for free, and they'll have some talented people go through with you how your system's set up, identify vulnerabilities, and give you suggestions on what to improve. So that's a great resource. Sure. And then CISA, that uh, cyber, uh, right? Yep. And um, that has a lot of free resources. And the one I'd, everybody should sign up is their free cyber hygiene assessment. So you give them 
the internet protocol addresses for your externally exposed equipment, and that once a week they scan through it and look for vulnerabilities and say, hey, you've got problems here, here, and here, and they give you a report, let you know what to do. Those Perfect. are really great things. Mm -hmm.